MTN Sports. This is Bobcat Replay. If you asked any Bobcat about what lies ahead, every single one will tell you that the most important game is the next one. With a humongous showdown in store one week from today, the number three team in the land looks to first take down a Cal Poly squad who are still looking for their first Big Sky W of this 2022 campaign. And with that, we welcome you high above Alex G. Spano Stadium, everyone, alongside Ty Gregorak, the former defensive coordinator with this Montana State program. I'm Ben Creighton. Ashley Washburn will join us downstairs in just a couple moments. Ty, obviously some big news this week. We learned earlier that Sean Chambers will dress tonight for Montana State. So the Bobcats, not only with Tommy Malott, but also they get 1A, 1B back in the lineup. Yeah, Ben, it's the epitome of a one-two punch. You got Tommy Malott, who's 10-2 and two as a starter, flat special with his feet. Unbelievable way to finish the game last week against NAU on a big third and 10 to Taco Dollar. This kid, is he's magical, Ben. That's all I can say. Yeah, like you mentioned last week, maybe the play of the season so far. But like I mentioned before, when you have Sean Chambers in the lineup to go along with Tommy Mallott, this is a Bobcat offense that is really hard to stop. Yeah, you know, when he's healthy, he, he's just dynamic with the football, especially down in that low red area. Expect him to call his own number. Still leads the country in touchdowns, and he hasn't played in a couple weeks. Yeah, both those guys in the top 15 of the FCS in rushing. And when you look at this Cal Poly squad, it's going to be the second straight week the Bobcats will face a pass-heavy offense, the ninth best passing attack in all of FCS, and led by those two guys, Spencer Brash and Chris Coleman. Well, absolutely. And you can see that Bo Baldwin's influence is slowly taking place here. It's just he inherited almost two decades of a triple option offense. They're still developing that offensive line that's given up 25 sacks on the year, Ben. And again, it's been a strong pass offense, but the problem comes in the red zone. They've really had their struggles getting in the end zone this season. And you go back to these top 10 rankings, Montana State looking to stay up there with Sac State with the Hornets getting the win last night against Portland State. Well, when you're undefeated in league and you're vying for that conference championship, you can't even think about a trap game. Montana State at 8-1, and one, it's a big night for them, no, no doubt. Let's get things started with the first quarter on Bobcat Replay. You see Brent Vegan right there, the head coach for Montana State, as the boot is underway. And we're ready to roll here in San Luis Obispo. And Halden just out of the end zone and getting to about the 25-yard line. That's where Cal Poly and the offense will get going. Brash. And a big hit delivered. Wow, talk about a big hit there from James Campbell. Over 300 yards per game, second in the big sky, ninth in the FCS. Brash escaping the pocket, steps up, and that one complete. That's going to be a first down as he finds his tight end in Josh Cuevas. Hey, guys. Yeah, after Montana State's narrow win on the road against Northern Arizona, this week has been all about getting back to the basics. And a big reason for that is the number of explosive plays that they gave up on defense, their second most this season, three of which resulted in touchdowns and got the Lumberjacks back into that game. And head coach Brent Vegan said, simply put, they were trying to do too much rather than just doing their 111. It's not how you win football games. And they said it's necessary to fix that against Cal Poly, especially because of their similar makeup offensively being so pass heavy, guys. Ashley appreciated in that one incomplete. Ty Okada there on the coverage. Yeah, with all the injuries to that tailback room, he's been absolutely fantastic and continuing to be fantastic as he picks up a first down for the Bobcats. And Lesnar's got the leg, and it's good. Blake Lesnar gets the first points of the night for Montana State. Stoppage of play, and I'll tell you what, it, it's hard to hear the whistles from our vantage point. For those who don't know, that where we're set up here at Alex G. Spano Stadium, no open air windows whatsoever, as that one is incomplete intended for Zedekiah Center. So, offense is Taco Dollar will be back to return this again on fourth and five. And Dollar will back up and he will call fair catch. And there's another flag, of course. And as Cal Poly will get penalized here for. Running into the returner. Incredible. Looking to continue that success next week in Bozeman. Spin move right there from Elijah Elliott. And Elliott breaks free. One tackle to beat. And tripped up inside the 20. Elijah Elijah. Elliott making big plays again with a big run there. Third down and two. They go right back to him. This time going to the left side. Johnson leaps for the pylon. And he is in, Marquis Johnson, Superman's into the end zone, and the Bobcats. Again, a little option play to the boundary. 
Marquis Johnson, who just got, he flat flies. Great effort played by him. I want to smack people tonight, Ben. Cal Poly again quick to the line. The hurry up and a strike over the middle. As once again, they go to that tight end group. Again, going to Josh Cuevas. You know, I was in the right spot. I just got a tackle better going back to the NAU performance. Totally. And, and, and very Bo Baldwin-esque. Great play by... That one's picked off. Callahan. Riley. Riley looking for blockers. And O'Reilly knocked out of bounds. And he has been solid at that linebacker position. That is now his fourth INT this season. Callahan O'Reilly. A lot on the fade, looking for Willie Patterson. Patterson able to haul it in. At around the one yard line, Willie P getting it done in that receiving core again. You do have a couple options though, like with those big boys he's got behind him, but Malak goes under center again. They give it to Derek Snell. And boy, a wide open lane, easy TD for Derek Snell. Second straight week with a rushing touchdown. Back to the ground game, finding a window, dancing inside, and there he goes! Marquis Johnson, have yourself a first quarter! Marquis Johnson again to the house! Well, I'd say Taylor Housewright's call Marquee about putting Johnson. him in the backfield's paying off. Great job by the front, as always. 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends. They're in the pistol formation. And again, Montana State offense runs inside and outside zone as good as anybody in the country, Ben with their Montana legs, this State. entire Montana State, State running attack. You know, he decided to cut that back in. If he actually would have cut it out, there was nothing but green grass, too. He's tearing up the turf. Now, here's the second quarter on Bobcat Replay. Sideline, the greatest tackler in the history of football, Ben. The sideline, you got a double pass here. Double pass going back to Spencer Brash, and he's got open turf. Brash cutting back inside, inside the 20 into the 15-yard line. Bo Baldwin, we know how strong of an offensive mind he is, pulling out the trickery here. Eight, Ben Seymour, what a hustle play by him as a defensive lineman chasing that down. A big hit delivered on the far side by James Campbell, and that one hauled in by Troy Fletcher. Malik Paulette back in the game for Cal Poly. Takes the pitch, rolls to his right, locks it up, back of the end zone, touchdown Mustangs. As they're on the board for the first time tonight, Josh Cuevas, the tight end, hauls it in. Well, it's a good job by Bo Baldwin, you know. He calls the plays for this offense. Uh, you, you know, he felt them struggling. Nice job with some trickery. Nice job by them getting on the board. They needed that one. Yeah, they desperately needed that as you take another look at it. And the nice fake right there from Paulette. It looks like 10 personnel balanced two by two deuce, but it's not. It's 12 personnel. Those are the tight ends flexed out. Tommy Malott flag thrown back at the 25-yard line as Malott gets past midfield. Malott turning on the Jets. Malott inside the 20 and finally taken down. But again, a flag back at the 24-yard line. Blake Lesnar comes out for another field goal. Trying to, nail, trying to nail, I should say, his second one of the night. That one sneaks through. Well, this is kind of a gutsy, aggressive call, considering they're on their own 38-yard line. And Montana State, that D-line delivers, but actually it's going to be Ty Okada with the stop. So D-line, linebackers, secondary, doesn't matter. They all get it done. to the ground game, finding a window. Marquis Johnson, Marquis Johnson tearing up the turf. How about a trio of touchdowns tonight for Marquis Johnson. He is continuing to be on fire here in the first half. I'm telling you, running back coach Jimmy Beal is not going to give him back. He said, nope, nope, this is my pretty new toy that I'm not giving back. This kid's having a night. Great job by Brian Armstrong's all offensive line. Rest is on him. What a night so far for Marquis Johnson again. Second out of 10, pressure coming, and that's a fumble. 
It's going to be scooped up by Montana State and carrying it all the way to the end zone. Boy, not only offensively, but defensively getting it done. Ben Seymour with the scoop and score. It's a great pressure by defensive coordinator Willie Mac Garza. They got to pick up the blitzing. I, bl I believe it was the nickel blitzing or, or an outside linebacker. That being said, it left Kenny Iden there. Yep. Kenneth Iden jarred that one loose. Getting his first career tonight. Started out of Bozeman, Montana. Big time play. Awesome job by him. And then the six Ooh, foot two. Is under review. D Lyman rushing in. They're a good staff. They just need some time to develop the way they want it. Busting up the gut. Are you kidding me? Marky Johnson. Gone again. What? A night! Marquis Johnson touchdown. Well, that young man's going to be the Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week, and if he's not, someone's got some splaining to do, Ben, because he is absolutely murdering it right now. But, but again, like I said, though, and I'm not trying to pile on, but you know, Paulie's defense is just really struggling, really, really struggling. It, it's it's been a rough night. 78 yards to the house, Marky Johnson. Burning up the turf again. No question, a great, great, great uh, defensive play there by Kenny Iden, making his first start, and Ryland Ord also coming in to play there. Loading it up, and that one hauled in. He's going to be a player in this league. He's, he's good. I, I give him a ton of credit. DP wide open in the end zone. Cal Pauly, another touchdown. Josh Cuevas once again, the tight end, hauling it in for six. Well, obviously, it's a great job by Cal Pauly. They need, they need points. It's a, it's a huge play. Play action, Malott. And this time, he finds Cleveland Thomas, who gets Montana State into the red zone. Malott looking to throw. And drag down. Absolutely no doubt about that. Well, there has been history in a positive way for Montana State in the running game against Cal Poly as that one is good. Time for the third quarter on Bobcat Replay. 78 yards is longest. He's averaging 20 yards per carry on 11 carries. I mean, just phenomenal night. He's been incredible. I, mean, like, I jokingly, not jokingly said, little, little pooch kick here. They're going to avoid him. That one's scooped up. You know, and honestly, Ben, Montana State's defense overall has been pretty good. John yeah. Austin getting the start at quarterback here in the second half into the 40. Once again, who else? Marky Johnson. Back to Elliott. Busting up the middle, dragging a couple of defenders. A nice, strong run there by Elijah Elliott to get to the 30. We've said that all year, you know, to be incredible. I believe, I believe the completion date is 2024. It's another year and a half or so. Austin slings it. Touchdown, Montana Touchdown, State. Aiden Garrigan with the TD reception. That's the old Dumb and Dumber, man. You totally redeem yourself because he just dropped a, 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 a ball that he should have caught. Redeems himself, gets the touchdown. Nice job by that young man. And a strike there from Austin. The redshirt freshman. Lester in for the point after. And this offense continuing to click. I mean, and not slowing down whatsoever. The lead continues to balloon for Montana State. Let's go back down on the field with Ashley Washburn. Hey guys, just a couple quick notes to update. I got to talk to Brent Veaton coming out of that half, and he says he was really happy to see how much this team is actually playing their 111, which is something he obviously harped on after that NAU game. But the biggest news I want to share is I did get an update on David Alston, and he is out for the game with a left knee injury. And from what I understand, it is pretty significant, guys. Another big loss for Montana State on that D line. I actually appreciate it. Still want it to be clean and execute properly. Going to Cuevas again. Pass complete. Stop just short Cuevas. of the goal line. They continue to feed that tight end. That's a first down. Cal Bali tonight. Brash. 
on the ground over the goal line. Touchdown Mustangs. Troy Fletcher. Touchdown Mustangs. Again, Troy Fletcher. Derek Snell is one of the best catchers on the on this team, and he's a big-bodied guy. Here comes another long run. Derek Coon again, past the 45. People are buying stuff sight unseen, man. I'm not lying. The Cleveland Thomas. Thomas bounces to the outside, stays on his feet, and Thomas has open space down the fringe. Cleveland Thomas hesitates, cuts back inside, still on his feet, reaching for the goal line, and stopped just short. Boy, talk about the extra effort and the hustle there from Cleveland Thomas, and you see the reaction. He thought he had a touchdown. Taylor Houser, I think, told it perfectly earlier in the season. He said, you know, Bozeman is a place where guys can come and, and just and just ball. And Derek Kuhn breaking away. Looked like he was swallowed up for a second there, but just escaped that pile and rushes in. Just kept churning those big old legs, Ben. And again, defensively, Paulie's got a long way to go if they want to get back in the mix and compete for championships here in the Big Sky. I was going to say, Garrett Coon, I think, had most of everybody in this stadium fooled. Missoula and Bozeman have been talking about game day for years, man. And it's never happened. Well, it's got to happen soon, right? And, and more on that possibility back down to Ashley. Well, Ben, you were standing there when I was talking to athletic director Leon Costello before the game started. And he told me, he told both of us that he did have a meeting with ESPN this week just to talk about logistics. If they do make that chance, he said hopefully he'll find out either later tonight or tomorrow morning. But if that is the case and they decide to come to Bozeman, they already have a meeting set for tomorrow or Monday morning at 9 a.m. to set up that week because there's obviously a lot that goes into college game day. But, you know, it's Sounding like it could be a possibility. We'll see. No question about that. Drew Polidor with the stop in the backfield. Yes, it was. Get ready for the fourth quarter on Bobcat Replay. Heading into the fourth quarter here at Alex G. Spano Stadium, 65-28 Montana State. And, you know, we, we talk so much about the Bobcats. You see Bo Baldwin right there. You've harped on it the entire night. The defense just not has not been there for this Cal Poly squad. And it's another talking point. Again, going back to it, it's going to take some time for Bo Baldwin in this in this squad. So many years running the triple option. It, it's still a work in progress offensively, but you and I both know how solid of a coach he is from his days at Eastern Washington, and, and he hopes to turn it around here at San Luis Obispo. They had some great teams. I mean, I, I mentioned Chris Gokhan and, and the Shotwells and Ramsey's Barton. I mean, they, they've had some real dude, Asa Jackson. I mean, they, there's some great players that have come through this program, and they've had some great teams. But as we're seeing the last few weeks, and we're sitting, you know, we're watching it tonight. They just got a long way to go. But I mean, there's a lot of good football players playing FCS ball, man. The throw, Garrett Coon cuts back inside, still on his feet, takes a pounding. Did he get the pylon? Yes, he did. Garrett Coon with the TD. <laughs> yeah, I, did. I didn't catch the number, but I know that the. Uh, Cal Poly defensive coaches are going to be like, okay, hey, great hit. You just hit him into the end zone. Nice job. Continuing to tear up the turf here in San Luis Obispo. Garrett Kuhn adding on to that total here in the fourth. Welcome back to St. Louis Obispo. It's Ashley Washburn, Montana State, rolling past Cal Poly 72 to 28. And Ben and Ty are people who've ever been to Bozeman, Montana. I think you guys can agree with me here. Some of the best stories start at the Rock and R Bar, and that started for 60, number 69, Devin Slaughter. He moved to Bozeman last year after finishing a career in the military. He was an Army Ranger deployed to Afghanistan in 2020, and he went to Montana State knowing that they had a great veteran program, became a bouncer at the Rock and R Bar earlier this year, had no intentions of playing college football, but guess what? Taylor Housewright actually saw him at a bachelor party, was intrigued by Devin Slaughter and his size, left the bachelor party, watched some game film of Devin Slaughter, came back, and that pretty much led to a walk-on spot on this team. So quite the story that all started at the Rock and R Bar, guys. Yeah. 
Garrett Kuhn getting to the outside. And Kuhn with a burst of speed. Look at Kuhn fly getting inside the 20. And Ben, that did it right there. They just broke the school record.